Hello, I'm Stuart from Inspiring City and uh, I'm with Stinkfish at the moment um, in a cafe in Dalston where we're going to be talking about um, his upcoming show, Portraits in Transit, which is coming up at the, uh, the Basement Space Gallery. So, hi Stinkfish, thanks for talking to us. Hi. Um, I suppose first things first, Portraits in Transit. Yeah. Um, I've just had a sneak preview of, of what's going on there, lots of different images. Um, can you tell me about um, you know the show and what those images are? Well, my, my work basically is based on portraits that I take in the street in different countries. And it's common people in their normal life. I carry my camera all the time and I'm taking pictures uh, in different moments. So when I find an interesting situation, interesting person, uh, I take my camera out and take some pictures without uh, asking for the picture, you know, so it keeps like the natural moment. And then I work with these portraits that become into stencils and that then become into murals. So Portraits in Transit is like some of these portraits that I've been painting some years ago. So basically these are, um, you know, incognito shots of people from one country yeah. that you're then transposing onto a wall into a different country and that's what yeah, the whole thing is. Most of the times, you know, it, it changed from one situation to another. Sometimes the people uh, notice I'm taking pictures, sometimes not. Uh, sometimes I use pictures uh, from that I find in, in, in other places like flea markets or... But in this case, all the pictures are from me or taken by me. And in terms of the um, the reason behind doing that, is is there any sort of um, thought process behind why why that's an important you know technique for you to use? Well, uh, I start making stencils, uh, like uh, different kind of, of images, you know, like from different sources. And in some point, I realized that I can use my my own pictures for make my work, you know, like not have to go to internet or to a book or to a magazine and then change uh, something I like. Uh, I realized I can start from zero, you know, like take my camera, take a picture, and then that become into a wall. So from always, I was really attracted with portraits of people. So it becomes small, like trying with one portrait, two portraits, three portraits, and in some point it becomes my like the the hard part of my work, you know, like the most part of my work is based on portraits. So uh, portraits in transit again. I suppose you know the, the whole thing about you know taking somebody from one location and then putting them on a wall in another is this something about immigration is this something about being a global society and and freedom of movement is there something or am i reading too much into it yeah no it, uh, you're right uh, the idea not start like that you know because i'm not the kind of person that sit uh, in their ha in at home and says okay i'm going to make a project about this it's more about the process you know as things that happen slowly. So when I start painting in the street, I just paint in my city in Bogota. And sometimes I, I, I went to second cities in Colombia. But in some point I start to travel slowly outside my country. You know, so, so with first years I start traveling once a year, then a couple of times, then it becomes like the full year traveling going inside, outside the country. So that's why I started to take pictures outside Colombia and paint it in other countries. So in first point, that. And during these travels, I also start to experiment how is this thing of the migration, you know? how, how the, how, uh, what happened when you are Colombian and you arrive to the European Union or when you arrive to Asia, or when you arrive to uh, the United States, you know, it's, uh, and when you can see what happened with people want, that want to try to travel to another country, you know. So it, at some point it mix all these things, you know, like my ideas, my experiences with my work. So obviously if you see a mural, it's something that you can say, oh, it's about migration, you know. I think my work is more like a, 
whole thing, you know. You have to go through my picture, you have to go through my website, to my blog, and see the stories that are behind each wall, and then maybe you can realize this migration thing, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, one person that, one that the people uh, think by themselves, you know. I'm not going to put a phrase in my world to see uh, this is about migration, you know. Uh, I prefer that the people can imagine and can make connections, you know, so I, if I speak with you, I can tell you my ideas. Maybe somebody in the street never is going to arrive to my blog, but maybe another people can be one time in, in Instagram or in internet and see, oh, I, I saw this mural and they arrived to my website and, and they research a little bit about the world. So, so at the end for me, yeah, it's, a, it's about migration, about problematics that we have more than ever now, you know, like all the world is it's feeling really strong now, this thing about the borders, you know. So you've painted a few murals already in London, you, yeah. you're painting one up, you know, as we speak, you're in the middle of one in Dalston, but you've already painted a few, I think one in Brick Lane, I think you might have done something in Camden, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Can you tell me something about those works that you've done in London as, as part of your current trip? Yeah, I, I, I paint a wall in Camden with DRT. Uh, I know him in London a long time ago, and early this year he comes, he was in a trip there in, in Latin America, and he comes to Colombia, so we speak a little bit, and I give him some contacts. And uh, then when I realized I was coming to London, we planned this collaboration in Camden. So there we, I paint a, a portrait of a girl from uh, China. Uh, then I paint uh, a portrait in, in a piece in uh, near Brick Lane. That was uh, a picture I took in Nepal around four years. I paint a couple of small pieces in Penge. Uh, and this one that I'm painting here in, in Dalson. And, and any particular reasons why those those images, those people you chose, actually they'll be they'll be suitable to paint in London. Any particular thought process behind that? Well, it's it's, it's not about a specific. Uh, my work always is like uh, I have like different options, uh, and it changed the kind of project, the the wall. You know, for example, this wall here it's really long. So I find this this image that works really good in that shape of wall, you know. So so it's not it's not a specific reason for for each wall. It's more about the moment and the time, and uh, yeah, it, it depends, you know. Sometimes I have to paint really quick because there is no no permission for a wall. So I find an image that I know I can make really quick, like in 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and then leave, you know. If I have good time and I have a permission, I can make something like here that is really detailed and I need a lot of hours for make all the details. So yeah, that's, that's the main work, but the main way of working, not only here, like always in, in any city. So tell me something about about your yourself then as a you know as an artist. How did you how did you start and how did you get into the, the sort of art that you do now? Well, I, I studied graphic design, and in some point of the career, I realized we realized with uh, with three friends more that we hate design, that we really not like to to work on that idea of design, you know, the, the academia, the academia, the university idea of design and the normal working of a designer is really boring and you are part of this uh, machine, you know, of work uh, for companies and brands and things. So just at the end of, of the career, we, we decide to start something by ourselves, you know, we, we think that designers can make uh, a different thing or think different or say something different and we start to try with uh, little stencils inside the university and we studied in, in a public university and in some countries of Latin America it's common that walls in public universities are painted you know like you can paint kind of easy so we start with this and really quick we jump into the street you know because was it's a, it's a big university but you want to paint 
more and more and more and more, you know. So we jumped into the street and it was a really good moment for us because there was not much in that moment in, in Bogota. So the, the reaction was really fast from some people. So that what was sort of year was this? Sort of was 2003. So that was a motivation for us. So we jumped from stencils to stickers to posters to tags to meet other people that was also starting in that point. And yeah, at some point it becomes uh, our full-time kind of work, you know. And I worked with this group uh, around five years. Which group was that? The name was Excusal. And after five years we took different uh, ways. And yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's a really short history about how I started. So... Um, what about influences? Were there any sort of influences that we might know from the, you know, the graffiti scene? Is that is that sort of something you drew inspiration from? Yeah, well, initially we not know in, in that moment we not know anybody, you know, was we never had in the past contact with graffiti, uh, so we just take things that we like, you know. That this is organic. You just start. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that group it becomes quite uh, important in the scene in, in Colombia. Because of this style of mix, everything you know, like we was four and we not have rules to say it's, we only make that or only this kind of things. We mix everything, uh, and then I start to I, I I met with people that become really good friends and that actually are part of my actual crew. And all these people were more involved in in graffiti writing. So, so I start to slowly enter to that world and make some kind of things of that world. So, so I think it's also one of my main influences, uh, graffiti writing, and that and the, and the way of working, you know, and understand the street. So, looking at your work now, your image is really recognizable. Lots of bright colors, lots of yellow, combination of um, of stencil and. and um, and there's a definitely a graffiti influence there. Yeah. Can you tell us about that particular style and how that evolved and how that came about? Yeah, well, I, as I told you, I started with stencil, pure stencil. So I, I, I worked really hard with, with my old group, like five years, four years, only stencil, like trying, or also learning. We not have any person that says you have to do it like this or like that. And there was not much information in that point in the internet, you know, or anywhere. So we just learn by ourselves and we make different kinds of stencil, all kinds of stencil you can imagine. And, and then I get a little tired of stencil and I, I leave the stencil a couple of years and I focus on only spray can freehand. So trying to make characters, trying to make letters, trying to make tags, make a hang with people that only focus on letters. Uh, and then I return to stencil by thinking in mix these things, you know, the, the things I already know from stencil and the things I was learning from freehand spray can style. So... Obviously, if you see my, my early works in that style are different from the ones you, you see now because it was also a process, you know? It was also like, what, what happened if I make like this? What happened if I erase this part? What happened if I not use this kind of portrait, maybe this one? What happened if I use the yellow, for example, for the faces? So, so yeah, it's, it's basically it's that the, the idea of my style, the, the background of my style. And where does the name Stinkfish come come from? Well, that's another story. I, I when I was in a school that was like in high school before I started painting the street, uh, I started to put stink. I, I find this word stink, you know, because I was learning English also, and I hear a lot of punk music in that moment. So I find it interesting the word, you know. It was that what was that moment in, in your life when you listen a kind of music and you want to make connections with a kind of things. So the stink catch my attention and the meaning of stink. So I put in my in my in my uh, 
books and in my things, 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 things. You know. And then when I start to paint with this early group, I realized I need a, a name for. But it was not going to be my my real name. I wanted another name, and I already have this word stink. So I start with stink only, and then I realize, okay, let's let's make something more complex, you know, like, a, and I say stingfish. It works for me, but was not a lot of uh, like a big story behind it, you know. It's like something you like, and then you start to make it, and in some point. A lot of people know me as Stink. A lot of people not know my real name. It's like so. I, I start to hang with graffiti people and in some circles of people, and all the people call, call me Stink or Stinkfish. So it's it's my name. Yeah. <laughs> Stinkfish. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs>